Welcome to the Gamescape, everybody. My name is Jarek, and today we're back in Phoenix Point, and this is going to be my guide to the Ancients and the Legacy of the Ancients DLC. Uh, this one is by request, actually. I had somebody ask me to do a guide on these guys, which I am happy to do. So uh, what I've got here is I've got us set up on our test field, like uh, most of my other Know Your Enemy videos. And we've got one each of the Guardians, and we've got one each of the different Hoplites that are available to us. So we're going to take a look at these guys, and we're going to see what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and have some tips and tricks on how to deal with these guys, and a little bit on how to run the ancient sites and not get completely overwhelmed. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. First of all, I want to start with the Guardians, because they're the big bads. Uh, you have three different ones. You've got the Living Crystal Cyclops, you've got the Orichalcum Cyclops, and you have the Protean Mutane Cyclops. So they are mostly the same. Uh, slightly different armor values, and I think they all have the same hit points. So each one of them has a lot of different immunities, has a single weapon and a stomp attack. So the I-Beam weapon, which is just a nasty attack. It's really bad. You don't want your soldiers to get hit by this thing. Fortunately, the effective range and the accuracy on it isn't stellar, but if you get hit, it's going to hurt. This thing does 240 damage with an effective range of 22. That is basically two hits from a sniper rifle, but the accuracy of a not so great assault rifle. So it's uh, it's devastating if it hits you, though, so you don't want that to happen. And in, in fact, that'll kill a lot of your soldiers in medium armor uh, until they're up higher in their strength level. Just kill them outright. So that's tough. Uh, good thing about it is it is three action points to activate that and it can be disabled. It's got 20 armor and it's got uh, 240 health. And so it's not that tough to disable the eye as long as you have a shot on it and a couple of snipers. Uh, you can get rid of the eye pretty easily. Um, same thing here, uh, 220 damage on this one, uh, 240 health, 22 effective range, still three action points, still 20 armor. Um, the Orichalcum Cyclops has slightly less armor than the others, uh, which is odd because normally the Orichalcum stuff is the more heavily armored, you know, like the if you take the Siren Aramis, for instance, uh, it's got the Orichalcum plating and it's got all kinds of armor. But yeah, this guy's a little little weaker. He's only got 10 on the legs instead of 20. Torso still at 34. Uh, head is still at 34. So, you know, heavy armor on the torso, medium armor and uh, light armor, really, on this guy on the legs, medium armor on the head. If we go back to this guy, he had 20 on all positions and 34 on the torso. So he's medium armor everywhere except heavy on the torso. And this last one, the Protean Mutane. Kind of the same as the Living Crystal one. Pretty much all exactly the same. Even more damage on the on the shot here. 260 damage at 22 effective range. So they're close. Uh, all three of them are close within, you know, 20, third, you know, 20 or 40 points of each other. Uh, the, they do a lot of damage. And your soldiers are going to have a tough time tanking that if they're not in heavy armor. So uh, just I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how to try and avoid that a little bit later. Uh, but just so that you're aware of what their uh, abilities are. Um, the other things that these guys all have, uh, they're all immune to mind control. Uh, they have EMP resistance, so your EMP grenades and such are going to do half damage to them. Completely immune to virus, uh, resistant to poison, so half damage on poison. Uh, psychic damage resistance, so if you've got a priest that's doing the mind crush, it's going to be damaged to have half damage. Uh, cannot be mind controlled, and they all have a stomp attack. Uh, the stomp attack isn't that dangerous. Tentile radius, uh, it does have a chance to uh, to shock your, uh, to daze your troops. And so that damage diminishes with range though. So as long as you can kind of keep a little bit of distance between you and the guardian, uh, it's not going to really hurt you too badly with that stomp attack. Really what you want to watch out for is this eye attack and you don't want to get hit by that eye beam, like I said. So uh, on top of those immunities and such, each one of these guys has an aura that they generate. So the living crystal and you can actually see that on the status bars of the hoplites. And you'll, you'll, I don't think there's any case where you'd ever have two different guardians in the same site, uh, but you can see it's allies. So it's still showing them up here. But if we look at the hoplites, they have uh, all three of the auras pictured here because I've got all three of the guardians in this map. Normally they'll just have one, obviously, uh, but all three of them are kind of ugly. 
Eh, not too, not the worst. So the living crystal one, it gives, if we just take a look at this guy here real quick. Uh, if we look at the living crystal, that gives stun to all melee attacks. So their melee attacks will now do days, is, have a chance to daze your, uh, daze your soldiers as well. That is not the worst thing of their melee attacks, so that's okay. The Protean Mutane Guardian gives the Protean Mutane Aura, which applies burning to all ranged attacks. So not only will you get hit, but you'll be on fire too. Uh, that all also applies to misses that hit the ground. They will light the uh, area they hit on fire as well and create a fire patch there. So that's something to keep in mind. And then the Oracalcum one, uh, Oracalcum Aura is the most annoying of all of them. And what this does is it applies three stacks of invulnerability to the hoplites every single time they put their shields down. And these things stack. So it, you know, if you go a few turns before you have sight of them and they're deploying their shields every turn, they get into the screen, they could have 9, 12, 15 stacks of, of invulnerability on them. And what invulnerability does is one stack of invulnerability grants 90% damage reduction uh to the next hit that is on it and then that stack goes away and so every bullet that hits every attack that hits uh gets rid of one of those stacks but it only does 10 percent of the damage it would have done normally so this is a really annoying ability and it takes uh you know with them gaining three more every turn if there's multiple hoplites on the screen that you're dealing with and you haven't killed the guardian yet this gets to be a real problem and it can be a, come a real problem in a hurry especially, like I said, once they start getting up to, you know, 12 stacks or so. Because at that point, you can unload a Deceptor on him, and every single one of those bullets is, even if they all hit, are just going to take down his invulnerability and only do, you know, a tenth of the damage that they normally would have done. So it's a problem. Uh, this is definitely the worst of the abilities, is as far as I'm concerned, anyway. And so that's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, these auras obviously go away when the Cyclops is killed. Um, so that's them. The Hoplites themselves, I guess I was on one so we can take a look at them. Um, their I-beam, they have I-beam shots too. These are more in line with regular sniper rifles a little bit. So 140 damage uh, on the one with the shield and the drill and an effective range of 27. So that's pretty bad for a sniper rifle, but the damage is in line for a sniper rifle. Uh, also costs three action points to activate this shot. And so that is, I guess that's their primary attack, or probably the one you're going to see the most anyway. Uh, they also have shields. Uh, this particular one has a living crystal shield. Uh, it's a single arm shield, uh, 240 hit points and a decent amount of armor. I think it's 50 armor. Uh, we'll take a look at it with the sniper scope and see exactly. And then they have the drill. And this is another one you really don't want to get hit by. Uh, 100 damage with 100 piercing. So forget about any armor you're wearing. It's not going to help you. And then shred 10 on that as well. And it's only one action point to activate this. So he can use it multiple times. Uh, the other one. Oh, sorry. One more thing on this guy. Uh, they're not that tough. They really aren't. They have um, 260 health, which is okay. But it's not It's not incredibly high. Uh, and their armor is pretty, pretty bad. Medium armor, uh, light on the head for this guy. So they're not that too, not too terribly tough. What makes them tough is the shields. And the shields are tough with good armor and a lot of health, and they provide pretty good coverage. Even if you're attacking them from the high ground and trying to shoot down over their shields, it's not an easy shot. And so uh, it's it's kind of tricky. Um, this guy has the double shields. He has the same I-beam. It's exactly the same stats, 140 damage, 27 accuracy, three action points. But he has the dual owl dual or calcum shields and so he plants these things down it's basically like a shield wall in front of him uh but he can also use these for melee and so this thing does 130 damage with 10 shred no piercing on this one at least so that's something at least your armor will will help protect you against this one uh but again uh just light and medium armor torso's 18 armor instead of 20 so yeah, he's uh 240 health so he's not particularly tough either so that's a, that's a good thing. Um, but like I said, once they put those shields down, ranged attacks against these guys get really difficult unless you got good flanking going on where you have uh, troops on multiple sides of them. So they're they're pretty good, and especially this guy because both shields down kind of wraps around the front of him. 
and that makes them pretty hard to hit. So the idea with them is hopefully you can get at them before they get their shields deployed, but that's not always possible. So, um, so those are kind of the abilities of them. So let's kind of talk about their strengths just a little bit. I'm going to start with the Guardians. Uh, strengths on the Guardians, uh, they are fast. They're 28, speed 28. And so they can get to you and they can, you know, do their stomp or they can run in from out of your line of sight if you activate them and they can come in and get a decent shot with their I-beam at you. They also have the decent armor. We already talked about that. Most of them are, uh, uh, well, the, the two are, are heavy with medium and this was uh, kind of heavy with light armor on the legs. They have a lot of health too. They are all bullet sponges, uh, 2100 uh, 2100 here, 2100 here. So they have quite a bit of health that you have to chew through to kill them. Next thing uh, we already talked about, they have that I beam just devastating and the auras that they grant to their allies are really a pain in the neck too. So that's them. The hoplites, their strengths, um, they have their I beam. Uh, we already talked about, already talked about their melee weapons too. They're really good. You really don't want to get hit by that drill. I've, I've been, and it's not good for the soldier. And uh, like I said, the shields, once they're deployed, it's pretty tough to get by them. Now, the Orichalcum shields, interestingly enough, have holes in them. You can kind of see in the video that it's got a hole in the middle there. And if we actually, if we go into uh, back into here, you can see it on the icon here. So this hole right here, you can actually shoot through that hole if you have a good enough shot. Um, sniper rifle, master marksman type thing. You can actually get a shot through that hole and hit the body. So that's something to keep in mind. It's a tough shot most of the time. You have to be pretty close for it to be uh, a reasonable shot, but it is an option. Um, weaknesses on these guys. This is kind of one of the things you're going to want to know too. Main attacks on all of these guys are three action points. And so War Cry becomes very effective against these guys. Uh, also, once the I-beam is disabled, the Guardians, at least, are not particularly dangerous. Uh, we talked about the stomp attack. It does a little damage and it might daze your soldier, but it's not a devastating attack. It really isn't. And so once you've got that I-beam disabled, it's pretty much all over as long as, you know, you don't have a bunch of hoplites on top of you at the same time. Um, as for the hoplites themselves, one of their big weaknesses, they are slower than dirt. They are speed 12. And so... Again, you get them war cried. Uh, they have two action points left to come after your heavy that's right there. I'll, they can only move three move three tiles if, and still get the attack in. So you just have to be four tiles, you know, five tiles away from them. And that's plenty for war cry with its radius of 10. Just have to stay a little bit away from them and they can't touch you. So that's a really good way to deal with them. Also, one of the weaknesses these guys have is they're not very smart. And by that, I mean... They treat virtually everything as a threat and will go after it. And what I'm talking about is decoys from your infiltrators. They'll treat that just like a normal target and, and shoot at it all day long. Um, if you've got mutoids that are throwing worms around, they, they see those worms as a threat and they'll go after the worms. If you've got spider drones from your infiltrator, they'll go after the spider drones. If you deploy turrets with your, with your technician, they'll go after the turrets potentially too. And uh, especially at range with the the poor accuracy on their I-beams, they can take several shots at a turret sometimes and not hit it. And that's a lot of shots that aren't coming towards your guy. So one of the useful things that you can do is you can put one of these decoys out in in a spot where they have easy, you know, vision to it. And, you know, it's not hidden behind anything. It's just a nice, easy target and they'll shoot at it or they'll run up to it and hit it with a melee weapon or whatever. Now with your turrets, that's not really what you want necessarily because turrets are a little bit expensive, but the, the other things, who cares, right? If they kill your spider drone, fine. If they kill a worm, who cares? Uh, if they kill your decoy, that's what he's there for, right? And so that's one of the things that I have noticed about these guys playing against them is they're just really not that bright uh, when it comes to target selection. They'll just kind of go after whatever's closest to them a lot of the time. And if that happens to be a worm or a spider drone, then that's what they do. Tips and tricks. So going into these ancient sites is potentially a rough mission if you don't kind of if you're not kind of careful about how you do it. And so I've kind of figured out as I've played through the game, one of the big keys of working the ancient sites missions is do not go running out into the middle of the map. 
Um, I like to just take my squad and work around the edge of the map, you know, and stay stay as close to the edge of the map as you can, because all of these guys are dormant when the mission starts. OK, no, nobody's up and nobody's up and moving around and they'll stay dormant until they notice you and their their perception range isn't stellar. It's OK, but it's not the best. And so what I like to do is have whoever my stealthiest guy also with the best perception is taking the lead. And usually that's going to be a sniper. And usually that's going to be a sniper with a full suit of Acheron armor because the Acheron armor gives good stealth and it also gives perception bonuses. And so if you can see these guys before they see you, you can move into position with the rest of your soldiers. And when they stand up uh, and they activate, they look just like this, right? And they're just turning and they're spinning and they don't have their shields deployed yet. And it's pretty easy to take them down with a couple of hits, especially if you've got good weapons like Ravens or uh, or even Cyclopses are good. Um, you can you can really just take these guys down before they're a problem and before they can start deploying their shields. So what I do is I'll take my leader. I'll do a blue move, right? Just a blue move so that if we run into something, then we still have action points for everybody else to come up and deal with it. And the trick here is be patient. You have to be patient on these maps. Like I said, nothing's happening until you activate these guys. So you have all the time in the world to do this. And so if you do happen to activate one as you're moving around the edge of the map, then the rest of your party can just move up, dispatch it, kill it, and be done with it. Okay. So that's that's kind of the trick is move slow, keep your, keep your stealthy and uh, perceptive guy in the lead, everybody else stays behind him until there's something to kill. And the idea, what you're trying to do, is you're trying to find the Guardian while activating as few hoplites as possible. Because you want to kill this Guardian first so that the aura goes away off of these guys and they become less of a problem, and especially especially when you're up against the Orichalcum Cyclops and he's given them those stacks of invulnerability. It's, it's really rough to deal with them once they get those stacked up. And so the other thing that you have to really want to be careful about is not triggering all of the hoplites because there's usually quite a few of them on the map. And if you get all of them coming at you at once, it can be really overwhelming. So work the edge of the map, look for the guardian. If you don't have eyes on him immediately, when you come into the mission, um, stay on the high ground first as much as you can too. So that if you do run into some, some site, some hoplites, there's a chance you'll be shooting down at them and you might be able to get a shot in over their shield. It's, it's tough, but you can do it sometimes. So, that's that. So, um, like I said, first first order of business on these missions, find and kill the Guardian. Uh, and find and kill the Cyclops to get rid of that aura. Once you do that, the Hoplites are a lot less dangerous. Um, like I mentioned before, Warcry is your friend against these guys. If you can get a heavy in close to these guys and start Warcrying, uh, they're going to be pretty much neutered. They're not going to be able to hit you with their I-beams. None of them can. Um, and you just have to be just a little bit, you know, like I said, five squares away from the nearest hoplite and he won't be able to touch you with his melee attack either. Um, it's also, so you want the, it, I, I like to have at least two uh, soldiers in my party that have war cry so that if one runs out of willpower while you're trying to get the, the eye killed on the Cyclops, then the other guy can step in and help out. So both of those guys, you want to have war cry, decent amount of willpower, you want them to be pretty mobile as well. So uh, either uh, jetpacks on their armor or the um, legs that give you jump or some uh, maybe a cross class with sprint uh, from the heavy from the assault class, uh, something like that. Something that gives them some mobility and especially vertical mobility is good because these uh, these ancient sites maps have a lot of level changes and not a lot of stairs always to get up and down them. So being able to jump is is best as well. Guardian, again, focus the eye first. Once you have the eye down, then he's not really that dangerous and you can even probably stop war crying him. Uh, after that, go for the legs, because if you take out all four of his legs, I think it stops his stomp attack. They generally don't do stomps after their legs are destroyed, but you do have to get all four. But they're not that tough, so it's not that big of a deal to get the legs. And then after that, then you can start ripping into that torso that's got the heavier armor, and you're going to you're gonna have a lot fewer hit points to chew through because you've already done all that damage to the easier parts of them to kill. 
Hoplite shields, when they're deployed, do not protect them from melee attacks. And so a good way of dealing with the hoplites is if you have a nice mobile melee, you know, you know melee soldier or melee specialist that can deal a decent amount of damage, it, that's going to do a, some good work for you too. Um, in my playthrough, if you watched my playthrough, we actually brought our Terminator Isabella in against these guys and she just wrecked them. Uh, she was able to kill them with one hit. Now she did have the the Matic of the Ancients, which is the first melee weapon you get from these guys. So you wouldn't have that the first time probably you went into one of these ancient sites because you wouldn't be able to build it yet. But uh, even a hammer it, with somebody who's got both brawl Brawler from the heavy class and also has the perk that gives uh, plus 20% bonus to melee damage. Uh, close quarters, I think is what it is. Close quarters combat is pretty good. That's an extra 70% damage on your 160 point hammer if you're using the hammer. So that puts you up into the 270 range, which is pretty close to enough to deal with these guys. You might have to soften them up just a little bit with a grenade or something first. Uh, but after that, you should be able to kill them with one hit uh, from a hammer with somebody who's got both of those abilities. Um, if you do end up getting into a pitched ranged battle with hoplites and especially quite a few hoplites, one of the things I found that is often better than trying to take the shot against the shields is to just use your snipers to overwatch them so that your snipers will take the shots after they pick up their shields. And so you're much more likely to hit the body of the thing than you are if they have their shields deployed. Um, something to know about that, though, is if we take a look at these guys. Um, here's what I was talking about with those shields. You got the holes in the shields there. You can shoot right through those if they're deployed. But also something to notice is they have a lot of empty space here that you could potentially miss a shot through. And so that's something to kind of kind of be aware of. So if we watch these guys uh, now, when their shields are deployed, they don't move around at all. But before they deploy their shields, they do. And so this guy's got this big hole right in his chest here that you can potentially miss through. And that's uh, something that you want to kind of be aware of. I don't I think I just moved too far. Let me get her pistol here so I can. Yeah, so there's that hole right in the middle of his chest there that you can kind of miss through. So I found when they're when they're first activated, they'll do those turns like that. And if you can catch him like on a 45 degree angle like that, you're a lot, lot less likely to miss through a hole in his body than if he's facing straight on with you. So just be again, be a little patient. Pick your pick your time when you zoom in on the target to where he's facing off, off about a 45 degrees from your your uh, you know, if you're straight on from him. And that'll that'll get rid of some of those holes. And you won't have to worry about that quite so much. So um, last uh, last two things. Uh, again, I already mentioned it, but use your decoys, use your worms, use your spider drones to give these guys something to shoot at that is not your your soldiers. OK, uh, and again, that that especially goes if you end up in a pitched range battle against these guys, which can happen. Right. And uh, there's a lot of these maps that don't have a lot of cover, especially out in the middle. And if you get hoplites that are coming at you from the other side of the map because they've all activated, it, it can be kind of a bad fight. And so uh, in those cases, you know, like I said, use your decoys, use your use anything you can to give them targets that aren't your soldiers to shoot at. And, you know, I, I like to say every shot that isn't coming at my soldiers is a good shot. So uh, the other thing to do in those cases, if you just can't get in close enough to do anything with melee is try to get uh, a couple of soldiers around to the sides of them to try and flank their shields so that they're not nearly as tough to hit. You know, somebody will end up with a decent shot on them. Hopefully if you can get, you know, if you can get one soldier here and get another soldier over here or a couple of other soldiers over this way, they can't deploy their shield against both of you. Well, this guy kind of can, but he can't. And so that's another thing. If you have to start moving to flank and hit them from two or three different angles so that they have to choose which direction they're going to protect themselves from. And finally, you know, my, my last piece of advice, I've already said it, but I'm going to emphasize it again, is just be patient in these, in these ancient sites. Okay. You've got all the time in the world while these things are, are sleeping. You can take as many turns as you want. You can move as slow as you want. Do your blue moves and be ready to deal with hoplites as they surface while you're searching for the guardian. Once you find the guardian, take him out as quick as you can, and then you can deal with the other hoplites, and they're a lot less dangerous without that aura uh, that they have. So 
that's going to be about it for this guide. I hope you've learned something from it. And if you've enjoyed it, do me a big favor, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.